Now that miracle baby, one woman defying the odds, she's going to meet the mother who became pregnant after having her fallopian tubes removed. Mm -hmm. Amy is here. This is pretty wow. incredible. It's yeah. it's it's incredibly mm -hmm. rare too. Right, right. I mean, most people have never heard of anything like this happening. Elizabeth Coe had medical procedure after having three children. Getting pregnant after that is much less likely than even being struck by lightning. But that one in a million experience it expanded her family. <laughs> This morning, a miracle baby, Missouri mom Elizabeth Coe giving birth to a son after undergoing what she thought would be a permanent birth control procedure. I was getting to that age that maybe I should think about not having any more children. Four years ago, 39-year-old Elizabeth, already a mother of three, made the decision to have a bilateral salpingectomy, a surgical procedure that removed both of her fallopian tubes to prevent her from getting pregnant again. My doctor said was one of the most effective birth controls, if not the most effective birth control out there. But then the surprise of her life, she got pregnant. I was just kind of shocked because that wasn't supposed to happen. Elizabeth took a home pregnancy test and tested positive. Wanting answers, she then went to get a second opinion. We went to the hospital and they did an ultrasound and they told me that he was in my uterus and he looked fine. He looked healthy. Everything was a normal pregnancy. According to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, when it comes to a partial removal of a fallopian tube, the rate of pregnancy is less than 1%. And for a full fallopian tube removal like Elizabeth, almost unheard of. He was incredibly unlikely. The probability was very low of me ever having this baby. But Elizabeth doesn't call him her miracle baby. Instead, her kids are calling him their angel baby. He's big and strong. He is a healthy baby boy. And this is so rare, David, that only a few other cases have ever even been written about that doctors are aware of. But Elizabeth says she's a planner. This was definitely not in the plans, but after beating all of these odds, Elizabeth says her baby's life is Pretty normal. Pretty normal. Well, he looks pretty happy. He looks very healthy. Very healthy, too. <laughs> he, they have quite a story to tell him when he grows up. Uh, Robin, you've got more with Dr. Jen. Yes, we do. And Dr. Jen's going to tell us how is this possible. Robin, this is so rare. But again, it's an example of how a lot of pregnancies in this country are unplanned. That doesn't necessarily mean they're undesired. So let's mm. go through some basic anatomy here, basic GYN anatomy. If you take a look at this animation, this is how fertilization normally occurs. It occurs in the fallopian tube where the egg meets the sperm, then it travels to the uterus. When fallopian tubes have been completely removed, that highlighted red circle there is the only way that that fertilized egg can get into the uterus. And the way that we think that that happens, if you look at this little demonstration that I mm -hmm. made here, this is how we cut off that opening from the tube to the uterus surgically when we take out a tube. Sometimes oh, a little right. opening will develop and that causes a patency where any tiny little thing mm. can get in, in this case, a fertilized egg. And this procedure, removing the fallopian tubes, is becoming more common. It is becoming, I would say it's really all the rage in GYN really? surgery now. There are a plethora of reasons we would take that tube out, starting, by the way, from cases of IVF. Sometimes before a woman will go through in vitro fertilization, we'll actually remove the tubes because they're thought to create some kind of cellular inflammation that reduces the chance of IVF being successful. There can be damage to the fallopian tube, either mm. from infection or a tubal pregnancy. We remove the tube now to dramatically lower the risks of ovarian cancer because about 70% of ovarian cancer actually starts in the tube. And then it is a form of permanent birth control. When I was a resident, we used to cut or tie the tube. Mm. Now we literally remove the tube. What do you tell your patients when it comes to birth control? that the only way to 100% prevent a pregnancy is with total abstinence. And I want you to look at these failure rates. These are what we call typical failure rates with some common forms of birth control. Birth control pills, 9%, nine out of 100 women can get pregnant on the pill. Condoms, 17% typical failure rate. Then you go with things that are a little more effective, like an IUD, less than 1%. Tubal ligation or removing the tube, mm. less than one in 1,000. Male vasectomy, less than one in 1,000, but no such thing as 100%. There you go, Jen, thanks so you much, bet. appreciate it. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching.
and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.